Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample binomial test using R, specifically R Studio. For this uh, video I'll be using an example file that I have, which is actually an SPSS file, so I'll need to load a package that can actually read SPSS files. So I'm going to load my library form, and then by pressing Ctrl Enter I'm going to actually load that data. It's giving me a few error messages, but that's not so important. And as you can see, it's 55 observations of 65 variables. I can actually show you a bit of the data, and as you can see, these were all questions. And at the back, there was something about gender, and that's the one we're actually interested in in this video. Uh, female or male, those were the only two options given. Um, the first thing we might want to do is actually remove uh, the missing values. Uh, as you can see, some people actually didn't answer, like here, and it's easier simply to leave those out. So I'm going to use na omit, and then actually that gender, and I'm going to store that under a new variable. Control Enter, and that's now my new variable. And the uh, one thing we might want to know is how many numbers of success we have. So I'm going to sum up my variable if the my variable is the same as the first uh, category. So I can simply use Ctrl Enter again to load that. And it's going to be stored in K. And as you can see here on the right, that means there are 12 people who had the first one. I think that was female. Then the total sample size can be done with length and simply control enter and I'm going to store that in N and as you can see that's 46. A binomial test is pretty straightforward in R. You can simply use binom.test then enter the K and the N and it will automatically assume that the proportion is going to be 50% and that you want it two-sided and here we go we got loads of information and the main value that we actually are interested in is this one up here or at least for this one uh, for this video um, what you can also do is simply use the binomial distribution in itself the 0.5 again being the uh, proportion that you would expect it to be and plugging in k and n this will give you the left side but since 0.5 is actually symmetric you can simply double it and it should give you the exact same result as you can see 0.016 and 0.0016 so they're actually the same now what if it's not 0.5 that you're after so then the expected proportion let's just call it p0 and let's change it to 0.37 for example then we can actually still use uh, the binom test and then just plug in that p0 and that's actually using something known as a method of small p values so will enter and there we go what this actually does is it adds up all the uh, probabilities that were less than or equal to the one that we have at our own uh, 12 people that we found so what we could do is for example set x to that value so d uh, b num but this is actually then a not uh, cumulative so I think I have it up here now. Where's my X? There it is. So 0 0.03855. And now what we want to do is we simply want to add up anything that is less than or equal to this uh, 0 0.0385. So we're going to be running that from 0 till N. And then simply check the binomial distribution for that specific value. And if that is actually uh, less than or equal to our uh, x then it should actually add up so I can run all of this um, there we go the starting sick and as you can see that gives the exact same result if instead you want to use a method known as the equal distance method it's a little bit trickier I couldn't find any package that actually does that so I'm gonna say my left uh, significance is simply the one we already had so I can enter that one in and then my expected proportion <coughs> uh, my expected count is actually going to be my expected proportion multiplied by the total sample size in this case n so control enter and the difference is going to be the expected that we actually thought it would be minus uh, how many we actually have 
So as you can see, the difference is uh, about five. So we actually expected 17 people and we have um, five less than that. Then for the right significance, we can use P binom. Um, we do the, <coughs> sorry about that. We do the K2 minus one. So that's uh, that difference uh, now being actually added up to it. Sorry, and you still need to load that in. Uh, we subtract one because we want uh, the right tilt and the lower tail actually set to false. <coughs> Sorry, my uh, throat is acting up there. Um, then the significance in itself is simply going to be the addition of those two. So I'm going to load all of that in and we can finally see the significance there. Now you notice that in this case there is no difference, but sometimes there actually might be. A last method would be to simply double the one-sided, but that's not commonly actually done. But just in case, it's just uh, doubling times two, and or you can use the binomial test. There are loads of different approximations that can be done on the binomial test, uh, provided you have sufficient sample size and perhaps sometimes some other criteria. But for this video, uh, I was focusing on the binomial test and hope this video was helpful for you. Please check out my website, it's in the description below, and if you have any other questions, just um, let me know. Thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe, because that really helps.